Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, we have our all-star business panel on the show. We're going to take a look at what, what would we talk about in May, the Pennsylvania state budget, and then one of our health care experts, Dr. Sh Stuart Shapiro, will weigh in on health care and all matters related to that following these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, we have our, uh, oh, is, is it Mother's Day, guys? Is that right? Yes. Yes. Mother's That's Day, right. Sunday. Yeah, well, the show, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to air. But joining me, getting the yays over there is uh, Fred Anton. He's the CEO of the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. And Gene Barr, he's also the uh, CEO with the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. We have our all-star business panel. All right, guys. Happy Mother's Day, everybody out there. Big day. Treat your mothers great. <laughs> All right, let's start. Uh, uh, Gene, let me start with you. The, the Senate passed last week a budget that sort of surprised people. $500 million more in spending than the governor recommended. It restores cuts in three major areas of the budget. It got a lot of Democratic votes, right? Uh, more, it got uh, more Democrats voted for it in the Senate than voted against it. The vote was uh, 39 to 8. Democrats voted for it 12 to 8. Talk a little bit about the prospects that that budget, as approved by the Senate, will pass. Well, of course, some of this comes from the fact that revenues are appearing a little better than had been anticipated. The real question is what's going to happen in May. And, of course, this is more money than the governor's willing to spend. Uh, I think it's probably a little more than the House is willing to spend. Uh, a lot of this, as you point out, is restoring some of the higher ed, secondary ed cuts, education cuts that have gotten a lot of attention. Uh, it's going to be somewhere in between the two yeah. by the time we're done. All right, Fred, should, uh, here, here's the situation. Governor Corbett has weighed in this week, and he's been a little cautious, saying, well, I'm not so sure about these cuts. And as Gene points out, they restored the education cuts. They, did, they put some of the money back into these county uh, grants uh, into health and human services in the county. They're restoring some of the cuts that were made, pretty much getting things back to where they were in last year's budget in many cases. Does, will Governor Corbett agree to this? Well, what Governor Corbett has said is the $500 million uh, addition to the budget is the ceiling. That's the ceiling. So what this moves the budget negotiation process along considerably yeah. in that if it's somewhere less than 500 million, well, the senators, particularly right. budget chairman uh, Corman, Corman mm -hmm. gets credit with the Penn State people for yeah. restoring some of the cuts. And of course, the majority of this money that they're restoring is for higher education, both the 14 state related and state three right. of the four right. uh, other schools. So I think this is moving toward. Mm -hmm. Now, what was particularly interesting to me was Corbett opening up the question of the pension situation, yeah, the unfunded money. pension right. liability. Now, when you get into things like the unfunded pension liability, when you get into issues like uh, fixing roads and bridges, now you're getting into billion dollar yeah. issues. Yeah, and Fred multi Ra yeah, Fred raises a good point here. I mean, it's one thing to pass a budget. This budget, you know, as you accurately point out, uses about 500 million in, in new monies that they got because, right. you know, the uh, money that states collected yeah, revenue's is a little better. Yeah, revenues are better. <clears throat> it's another thing, however, to getting into the transportation issues, which universally there's support for. Yes. Maybe not how to pay for it. Plus, as Fred points out, something like a 29 billion dollar pension increase. But the governor doesn't seem that he wants to tackle those now. Put them off, do the budget now, and deal with those issues later. Do I got that about well, right? Well, I think what's going to happen is, I think you're going to clearly see the budget. I think you're going to see a budget that's done fairly early. We really need to tackle this unemployment compensation, which is a $4 billion issue that needs to be taken care of. We're actually losing right. jobs over the issue. 
Uh, but you rightly point out, and I think the governor has talked about the fact, pensions are a problem. He has had to put more money in that might otherwise go to other education issues on pension and count that because that's, hey, that's part of the personnel expense. It's starting to take its toll already, this pension issue, on yeah. our ability to take care of other things. Yeah, but having said that, do either of you believe they will do transportation and pension before they break for the summer recess, no, or are they, are they going to be put off? I do not believe they will do transportation. I don't pension know fixed. about pension. Now, let me say this to you. There are a lot of things that can be done to go halfway, and they're faced with the fact that even very liberal private companies have eliminated Define benefit yeah. plans. Yeah. It's it, it's really Little it's irresponsible to have a defined benefit plan. Yeah. Seventy. It's a little tough, however, to do given the constitution of no, the state I, for current employees, but well, for future employees. Well, right? you can do it for future. Look, you don't really have a big constituency for future employees, and I frankly believe mm -hmm. you can do it for current employees to some degree, depending yeah. upon their contractual so, rights. So, summing, summing this up now, Gene Barr, uh, the Senate pro bill will go to uh, the appropriation bill now goes to the House. Uh, Ter Terzai may have a little more. The majority leader Mike Terzai a little more difficulty getting all of his members on board than this than than the Senate leaders did. Is this likely to stay the way it is for the most part, or do you think there'll be big change or little change? Uh, prob probably probably moderate changes. I think it's going to be, as I said, a little bit less than 500. Let me go back to the pension issue, though, very briefly, because it's not just a state pension, it's a municipal. Both have yep. to be solved before we proceed down this road. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about business taxes and some other aspects of the budget that need to be discussed. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by BetterSaferRoads.com. To voice your support for safer highways and less traffic congestion, visit BetterSaferRoads.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're going to switch gears. Look, a, one of the hot topics in Harrisburg right now is property tax reform, getting rid of the infamous property tax, substituting sales or income tax. Fred Anton, take it away. How many, this has come up for 40 years. Well, it's come up for 40 years, but it's intensifying because with the constriction of the state uh, funding for uh, municipalities yep, and mm -hmm. local education and yep. so forth, these uh, school districts, many of them are hurting. Now, uh, there's been an attempt to uh, limit the amount of money uh, that can be raised locally mm -hmm. for property taxes, and it's that's been through a number of reforms. Uh, the local uh, officials are supposed to submit uh, to referendum uh, in, uh, increases, increases in local yeah. taxes, but right. the, they've been able to avoid it by getting. Uh, exemptions, exemptions and waivers yeah, and so right. forth. Good point. Well, and uh, uh, the local governments are f funded largely by property taxes, and there's more and more uh, controversy about people actually losing their homes, senior yeah. citizens. Gene Barr, let me, let me uh, Fred makes a couple of great points. Look, 40 years we've been through this, right. increased sales tax, increased property tax, get rid of all of the property taxes at the local, most unpopular tax. You've been around this stuff a long time. Does this have any chance? Does it have some <laughs> chance? I don't know. But let me give you some cautions. Okay. With this. First off, until we solve this pension problem we've talked about, all you're going to be doing is shifting around the cost for a greatly and over-expanding cost system to taxpayers. Two, if we shift those costs, for example, from individuals to businesses in the form of higher sales taxes, because business pays a significant part of sales tax in sure. this commonwealth. And 
I understand the desire to, to assist people who might lose their homes, but if we simply absolve the burden from a class of people who might be able to pay it regardless and shift it to, say, uh, families starting out because of higher income taxes, higher sales taxes, mm -hmm. then what you do is you mm -hmm. accelerate We'll call it the graying of Pennsylvania. Uh, we want to encourage yeah. young families to be well, here. So I think we have to be cautious how we proceed again, with this. One of, the, one of the issues would be if it, we have a sales tax, if they get rid of some of these, there's lots of things that are exempt. Well, Absolutely. Fred Anton, they're never going to vote. Who's going to vote to get take food and clothing off the exemption list? They're big exemptions, right? Absolutely. They are big exemptions. And, and you're talking about replacing... Uh, Twelve billion four hundred million. That's what you're replacing. Is that that's what the that's the number property tax that's is the generating. number the property tax wow. is generating. And, and that, some people want to keep it because they believe that through property taxes you've got a guaranteed source coming in on an annual basis. Yeah. Or a lot of people don't want to keep it. But so all right, I'm going to put you both on the spot. I'm going to start with Fred. Uh, yes or no? Is it going to happen? Uh, this session, you know, by the end of the year, no, calendar year? No, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not this session, no. Not this session. Nope. Do either of you think it has a reasonable chance? I mean, this has been debated for 40 years. Fred Anton, does it have a chance in the near future? Well, it might have a chance depending upon how much tax increases are raised at the local right, level. We're out of time. What do you think? Uh, m maybe, maybe four, five, six years down the road. All right. One of our health care experts, Dr. Stuart Shapiro, is here. We're going to get a little health care update following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education, 14 state-owned universities. The state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me as often as the case is Dr. Stuart Shapiro. He's one of the health care experts we call in from time to time. He brings us up to date on important changes in health care. He, of course, is the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Health Care Association. Hey, Stuart, before we get started, I want to tell you something. I have seen now more demonstrations, more folks lining up in the state capitol than I have in a long time, you know exercising, what do we call that, their First Amendment rights. Did you have a, you had a group that showed up and did something too, didn't you? Yeah, I, I had a group, but it was really a group advocating for seniors. And from across Pennsylvania came health care workers, mm -hmm. not professional lobbyists. These were folks who came in the clothes they wear to work. Right. These are folks making $10, $12, $15 dollars an hour. And they came and said, protect health care for seniors, mm -hmm. and especially the frail elderly are in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. They delivered a petition to every single legislator. Yeah, they hold and that petition up. Well, well you it know. really said there were 12,137 signatures. Right. There were 100 pages, and it's in small print, oh, of God. 100 pages, asking them to restore the $100 million cut mm -hmm. in the governor's budget mm -hmm for the seniors in Pennsylvania who are in Pennsylvania's right. nursing homes. But as I said, there, I mean, I've not seen a time when there's been so many sort of demonstrations and meetings in the Capitol and state Capitol. We do a lot of state Capitol's uh, programming, as you know, and people, you know, exercising, their, whether you like, I mean, it, it's healthy when people go and get involved in and, and make their case known, regardless of what the issue oh, is, absolutely. right? absolutely. But the, but the issue is it's the competition right. for dollars. Sure. And every group comes in to tell their story. Yeah. Maybe a group of hospital providers. It might be folks who want more money for drilling. Sure. It might be the counties asking for more money for schools, schools or it might sure. be the universities. In this particular case, okay. they were there to represent the people without a voice. Now, that Governor, Governor Corbett's a very smart man. And in his first budget address, a year and a half ago, he said, 
we are in a tough economy and we need to pay for the must-haves, not the nice-to-haves. Mm -hmm. And he has been a staunch supporter of the elderly, as has the legislature right. in terms of nursing homes. In this budget, they made some tough choices, and these folks were here to say, because of federal Medicare cuts, we need some oxygen on the Medicaid side, right. and therefore but we're let, asking the let, dollars be restored. Let's talk about that a minute. Now, one of the things that we just talked about in the previous segment, and this is why it's great to have you on now, is we, they focus primarily on the education restoration cuts, but also the situation in terms of whether or not 500 million would be, res would be in the governor's budget would be increased by 500 million because of the revenue projections that show the state taking in more money. Let's talk about your piece to that right now. Where does it stand based on what the Senate did this week in restoring some monies to the programs that you're talking about now? Are you involved in the restoration? Absolutely. Well, talk, and, and, and talk that's about some that. of the good news. Uh, because of federal Medicare cuts, and we could talk about them in detail if you want, but a tremendous amount of money to pay for Obamacare and for other things withdrew money out of Medicare, the services to the elderly. Right. And some of that needs to be restored through the Medicaid program. And is that... And, and in, is, uh, in the state budget that the Senate approved in a bipartisan way, which was interesting because both sides voted for that, That's great. Uh, restored about half the cuts for nursing homes, which means that and, and there's a long way to go because the, the dollars are necessary to, to provide the, and to maintain the quality of care that has, is, is at its peak in Pennsylvania. Right. Okay, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I want to get, I want to get some perspective on this. $500 million, how, has $100 million of it been restored to, to uh, nur into no. the medic? How, how much in dollars do you know? Yeah, I do. It's to, the state cut almost $50 million out of the, their budget, which is then matched by another $50 million in federal dollars. So that's how so you get the $100 million. That's how you get the $100 million. And in, in this budget, it restores about $20, $23 million of state dollars. It. So it brings the cut down to about $50 million so rather than $100 million. So you're talking about... A, We're halfway there. A halfway cut from what you had all gotten last year. Correct. In last year's budget. So that, that's, that's good. So in other words, the Senate budget, and we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, the Supreme Court case and the impact that it might have, the health care case. But let's, get, let's clar clarify this. $500 million in, rest, in new monies added to the governor's budget, $50 million in total from federal and state well, sources will come back to... Right, but that's not the comparison. The, the governor's, the Senate budget added $500 million of state dollars. State dollars, that's correct. The money that's going to nursing homes or to the care for the elderly in nursing homes is $23 million I of got that five hundred. And then that brings in, in another I got it. $25 million. That's why we have you so. on the program to keep me straight. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Uh, in, in June, we expect that the Supreme Court will hand down its decision on the constitutionality of uh, the Affordable Health Care Act. What impact will that have? Stuart Shapiro will weigh in on that. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Welcome back to the program. Well, in June, the Supreme Court w will hand down its decision dealing with the Affordable Health Care Act, particularly the mandate part of it, whether it's constitutional or not. We really, Dr. Shapiro, we really don't know what the court has a whole bunch of, uh, has some latitude in terms of what it can do. As you well know, you've studied this, you're an expert on this. They could just simply say it's, I don't think they'll do that, it's not ripe, because that most of it then going to affect 2014. They could rule in the mandate. G g give us your sense about what you think they're likely, what parts of it they're likely to deal with. I think the Supreme Court has looked very carefully at this, and I think they are likely to, re to reject 
the mandate that's in there. Really? I do. Mm -hmm. The question is, what will they do with the rest of the act? Right. But when you look at the entire act and what it did, the burden it put on Pennsylvania, it adds 750,000 people to the Medicaid program. Right. And while the federal government will kick in some extra money for them for a couple of years, the long-term burdens of that on this state and on every state is enormous. Then to partially pay for this, and this is something that has not gotten written about, they took $15 billion out of Medicare that goes to support the seniors who are frail and sick. To which pay is, for the, right, to pay and they for took the that money at, part? to pay for the mandated part. So wow. they've cut back on Medicaid to seniors. They've expanded the poor. They've set few limits on what needs to be done, and then they've laid down a vastly expanded Medicaid program, even in the services that aren't being, weren't being paid for mm -hmm. by Adult Basic here in Pennsylvania, they've added all sorts of new services. And if the mandate stays and people have to buy health care or pay a fine, the fine itself, you would argue, is not sufficient to cover the cost that you're just talking about that will oh, be shifted from will, one program to another. It will absolutely not cover those costs. And the burden that they're already seeing the increase in cost of the program, and it's very clear to anybody yeah. who has looked at that, that the estimates by the Obama administration vastly understated yeah. what the costs are going to be in the out years to Pennsylvanians and to everyone else. Yeah, we have about a minute left, but my, my sense about this is that we've just not dealt with the cost of 75 million you know, people who are now you know, the baby boomers. We're, we're just not sensible about how we pay for this, that we can't continue with the current payment that we all make plus the numbers of people who are getting the benefits. Oh, we, we, can't, we can't continue it. And not only that, every time Congress considers something, the sequestration yeah. to balance the budget, right. they took $500, billion, $500 million out of nursing homes and senior care in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. They keep cut, even the, the payroll tax extension took another $50 million yep. out of the system of care for great, the elderly. Great, great, great point. Great update. Uh, we'll have to get you back when we get this business settled with the Supreme Court. All right, thanks for watching this edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, uh, stay well.